So um, I'm Will, I'm the founder of SFNX, which is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, so we've been on a kind of two year journey to become a decentralized autonomous organization. And we're kind of at the um, spearhead now of it where we're just about to kind of launch on, um, on DAO stack. So to go back two years, the problem that we were looking at was that if you're using cryptocurrencies, it's a reaction against the modern world, people taking back control of their autonomy, people taking back control of their money, where you don't, you're not using a bank that controls your funds, but you personally are able to transfer your Bitcoin or your Ethereum to whoever you want, use it in all sorts of other systems. And that, that ecosystem is now very mature, as we heard earlier, where you can lend out your funds, you can make your money work for you. But in a sense, in the cryptocurrency industry, there's still um, a whole bunch of centralized power systems. So if you want to exchange your funds, actually, two years ago, your only way of doing it really was to go to a centralized cryptocurrency exchange where you deposit and send your Bitcoin or Ethereum to that exchange. And then while it's on there, you can exchange it for other currencies, you pay some fees, and then hopefully you withdraw it back to your personal wallet eventually. But most people would actually leave their funds on those exchanges. And we saw that, that, we saw that as a problem because essentially we're recreating the, the same centralized power structures. And it's not just the fact that um, your funds aren't sort of directly held by you and controlled by you, but it's also that you have to give them often KYC data. And if, um, you know, in, in some cases your funds could be lost, but also that you, you basically g give up um, your control. And we wanted to change that. So we started off building um, a decentralized exchange where you, you always keep your funds up until the point when you directly peer-to-peer -peer exchange them with someone else. And so that, that's, that's one side of the problem. On the, and, and we could solve that on a technology front because um, you can enforce rules on the blockchain where I could sign and say, I want to trade with, so, with, with, with someone else. Um, and this is the price that we're willing to trade at. And if we both agree, we can make that swap happen directly between us without anyone else needing to be involved. But there's another side to the problem, which is, which is the power actually, which these exchanges have. So they can take all sorts of arbitrary decisions. And actually in our ecosystem, exchanges do have a huge amount of power. So they decide which other tokens get added onto a platform and what, what people are allowed to trade, what, what there are markets for. Um, they can decide um, whether or not to allow a new protocol to be offered to a whole bunch of much wider audience. And that's something which we couldn't change just on the technology front. That has to be changed by listening to your customers and actually giving them some power to tell you and, and to control how, how their experience should be. Um, and so we realized alongside that technological decentralization, which is where we are now, we have a platform where you can trade with anyone else from your own wallet without having to send your money to someone else. We also needed a societal um, or, or, or sort of control decentralization where we'd allow customers to start to make decisions themselves about how the platform is run, what the fees should be, what tokens are available, and every other decision that typically would be made by a centralized company. But that wasn't something we could do on day one. So we looked at that problem and said, right now we don't have the technologies available, available to do that, but we want to start, start to lay the groundwork so that as time goes by, we can start to hand over control to our customers. And so the way that we did that was that we created um, a cryptocurrency token so that for every time you traded or used the platform, you earn a very small amount of this token. So that started around 18 months ago. And over the last 18 months, everyone who's used the platform has slowly earned these tokens. So, so that the supply started um, very small. And over time, it got distributed to thousands of users as they were using the platform. And today, there's several thousand of people, people who have been kind of loyal customers. And the really, really interesting thing is that you know, many of those have ideas. In fact, they can often, we've seen people write whole presentations, spreadsheets, modeling for how we can improve the platform and send them to us. And they get very engaged but in a very, at the moment, sort of unstructured way. But you can already see the value of starting to get your customers involved um, just from that. And the other prom promise we made, which was the huge thing, which has now put us where we are, is that 50% of all, all the fees that were generated on the, on the platform would be put into a pot. Um, so we, we've done this for the last nearly two years now, a pot which would be eventually controlled by those users who earned the tokens who used the platform, so the users themselves. And today, there's about $4 million in that pot, which um, in theory are kind of owned by that group of decentralized customers. 
but there's no clear way for them to take any decisions. Um, the actual mechanism through which we can listen to them, through which they can take decisions, um, didn't really exist. And that's, I think, the, the big thing that's changed over the last six months to a year with a lot of experiments with decentralized autonomous organizations, where finally, actually, we are at a point where we've been testing several of these. In fact, here we have a, a very small FNX DAO um, where we're just testing out DAO stack, and, we, and we've tried several other protocols. But it's, been, it's become clear through some of the experiments that are now happening that we can actually say, OK, we have several thousand customers um, who all own these tokens and used it over years and $4 million. How can they use that? How can they spend that? How can they take decisions? And it, it clearly can't be through pure voting um, because there's so much attention that goes into that. These people have day jobs. They have all sorts of other things they're doing. But for the first time, something like DAOstack, where you can actually um, sort of yeah, conserve that attention resource and have people predicting what the group, what, what's in the best interest of the group, so that they only have to vote on the most contentious issues, um, allows us to do that. And so uh, we're just about to launch uh, in about two months' time this uh, kind of ultimate vision of what we were trying to build, where finally our customers will control the company um, or, or, or the platform and, and, and this sort of um, next step of evolution. So. It's kind of an interesting time for us because, in a way, we're kind of handing over control. Um, but at the same time, it means that we'll suddenly get a lot more input from uh, everyone who's been using the platform and who actually cares in some ways as much as, as, much as we do and has, have, have been trying to find ways of contributing. Um, so I think, I think that's just kind of, and, and there are now many companies who are, who've been on that journey. But finally, we're at the stage where it's almost becoming realistic um, to actually let people have a real input and control, not just that their money, but you know, the platforms that they're using and which um, they, yeah, and eventually I think we'll see that same thing happen to social media and every, every, everything else that's in our lives, but it takes a long time. Yeah, that's it from me, but thanks.